how do you verify your quality control? Are you confident that there's no contamination in your products? What if you were audited and had to send samples to third-party testing lab? Are you confident that your products are clean? Let's find out how. What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today, we're gonna talk about all the ways that we use the Mighty Microscope on our mushroom farm. If you're interested in purchasing this microscope that I use on my farm, check out our link in the description below and our Amazon affiliate page for all the accessories that you might need. So today we're gonna to be talking about the amazing tool of the microscope. Often overlooked in the field of mycology, microscopy is an important skill that's going to reveal things to the naked eye that would otherwise be invisible. So whether you're trying to see contamination, you're exploring spore germination, you're verifying spore germination, um, if you're looking for clamp connections during breeding, contamination in your liquid cultures, in your substrate, and in your input parts of your farm, or just monitoring the cleanliness of your farm overall, you're gonna need a microscope. All right, so to break down the microscope, basically I'll start at the structure from the base and work my way up to the lenses. The bottom is called the base, this is where all the parts of the microscope are attached. When you're looking into a microscope, you're gonna to wanna to have a nice firm base. Um, oftentimes people will extend the base to the, the actual um, structure that the microscope's on. So you're gonna want a nice heavy desk or a table. Um, it's best to work on a granite countertop if you're gonna be looking at very high power microscopes just because little vibrations could change and amplify when you're looking down the lens. So you wanna make sure you have a nice steady base. So when I'm looking at the Amscope, there's the light source that's attached to the base as well as the arm of the microscope. Today's modern microscopes have LED lights as the light source compared to the old antique scopes that used sunlight and mirrors. We're lucky enough to live in modern age where microscopes of very high quality are relatively inexpensive. All right, so after the light source, you're going to have the stage of the microscope, and this is where you place your slides. So the stage can move in three different directions. So there's the X and the Y axis, and then the Z axis, is gonna be controlled by the focus. So there's a, a coarse focus and a fine focus, and that's just gonna move your stage faster or slower so you can focus in on your sample. So there's also a gripper on the stage which holds your slide in place. And then that way, when you rotate the adjusters on the arm, you can change the direction that you're looking at on your microscope with either left to right or up and down. Some of the fancier microscopes will have um, little indicators or notches that could help you focus in on the size. So sometimes there'll be a pointer on the lens or on the actual stage. As we move up the microscope, we're gonna enter into the, the different lenses. There's the objective lens which on my microscope here, I have a, a 5X, a 10X, a 40X, and a 100X or oil immersion lens. As the number grows, it's going to amplify the amount of light that is required to travel through the microscope. So it's gonna take in a smaller amount of light, the larger the lens, but it's going to allow you to see smaller samples. As you rotate through your objectives, you're going to want to adjust your light source accordingly so that you'll get a good visual of your sample. So as we move up the microscope, you're going to see the ocular lenses. So this is a binocular scope. 
You can also get a monocular scope, which just has one lens. You can get a trinocular, which often um, they'll implement a camera into the third lens, or you can even have teaching microscopes that have multiple oculars connected to the same objectives. The ocular lenses are designed to be uh, adjustable to your face. So you can adjust each individual lens if you have a difference in your eye strength, I guess. But also the width of your um, oculars should be so that it's very comfortable to look through the microscope without squinting. So focusing on the various samples and what you would be observing is going to correlate to the different objectives. So for 10X, you're gonna feel see a very wide field. So this is for scanning for any organisms, or maybe if you have a, a spore syringe and you're trying to verify if there's spores, you're gonna to wanna to scan that at a large field, low, uh, objective. Then as we go to a 10x or a 40x, you're going to start to see different individual cells at this point. So you'll be able to see an individual yeast cell, individual spores. And then if you want to start to observe the different structures, you're going to want to go to your 100x um, or oil immersion lens. And then this is going to allow you to see some nuclei. Um, if you're dealing with various bacteria with flagella, you should be able to see some basic structures. Um, and then also hyphae, you'll start to observe if a spore is germinating or you'll be able to identify clamp connections, uh, mycelium. So different ways that you would observe samples on your farm um, could be a spore syringe versus a liquid culture. So for a spore syringe, you're going to see many spores, hopefully, and then you should not be seeing developed hyphae because that would indicate that there's some kind of contamination or bacteria or yeast. In a liquid culture, if it's contaminated, you would see a high population of bacteria. So you're going to either see cocci, which are very small round cells, or bacillus, which are long skinny cells. And because it's in a high nutrient broth, you're going to see a much larger amount of organisms compared to a spore syringe, which should be in water. For a substrate, in order to be able to observe a substrate, you're going to have to flush off the surface with a liquid. So you can either use water or a broth to gather a liquid sample. And then that should contain organisms if your substrate is not sterile. And the same applies to grain or a final fruiting body. So once your mushroom emerges in the fruiting room, it most likely won't be sterile, but you know, you should be able to identify what organisms are present and mitigate those organisms on your final product, which is a food product. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video explaining the capabilities and value of the microscope on your farm. If you'd like a link to the specific scope, check out the description below and check out our Amazon affiliates for any uh, other materials that you might need associated with the microscope. And I hope you guys start using your microscopes to give you insight on your farm. Until next time, much love.